episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. It's not very interesting here today. I'm usually in my home office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my home office as well. So my name's Nev anyway, Frederick. How, how's everything going over your way? Well, I can't complain. Uh, it's Monday morning. We have a brand new album out. So, yeah, I'm doing okay. You do have a new album. And, man, the new Hammerfall album, is, of course, it's called Hammer of Dawn. And this thing is just incredible, dude. It's filled with metal earworms. It's so catchy. And uh, it's hard to feel bad after listening to it you know there's something about hammerfall but you can put it on and no matter what mood you're in it'll put you in a good mood you know yeah i understand what you're saying because that's been uh, one of the key elements to to all the hammerfall albums i, I guess that um uh, it's not just metal and uh, get out all your aggressions and about that it, it's mm. it has some nice melodies and and kind of a an uplifting uh, uh, mood, so to speak. Uh, you get in a good mood because uh, it's uh, not all about aggression. It's about uh, the feeling, feeling good. That's exactly right. But, I mean, I saw that you guys had a big listening party for the album uh, the other night too. That looked like – I mean, because a lot of bands don't seem to do that these days. You know what I mean? They just – they'll either catch up privately or they'll, you know, have a couple of beers at home. But – this is the first one of a little while where I'm like, see a band going to a pub or to a venue, hanging out with some mates and celebrating. Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it could be due to the pandemic the last two years at least. But uh, we thought, why not give this a proper... First, we had a, a small listening session for, for the fans up in uh, Stockholm. Uh, there were about 60 people um, who heard the record first. Um, and it was so, such a great thing for us to to see the reactions from the real fans and uh, and just it put a smile on my face uh, to be able to get in contact with an with an audience uh, that direct. So uh, that was a, a great thing to do. And then we had a, a little bigger party in uh, just outside Gothenburg, um, where we could hang out and, and sign some stuff and and listen to the records and, and see the videos and. And just have a great time. How was that, you know, apart from the hangover that you probably had, uh, how was it sort of looking back on the night and seeing everybody's reactions in, in real time, you know, like, because that hasn't obviously happened for a little while, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was great. I mean, of course, there's a lot of fans who would appreciate almost uh, everything that you do. Mm. But also there's, there was so much people, though, so... Uh, not everybody knew about Hammerfall, um, at least not the, the, the whole catalog or, or stuff. So it was a joy to see them react to the, to the album and, and the videos. And um, yeah, we had a great time hanging out and, and just talking to people and uh, signing and get a drink and take some photos, things like that. So I'm really looking forward to get out on the road again because this, this is something that I missed a lot. Of course, uh, I mean, your last album, Dominion, came out in 2019. But obviously, with that thing that happened, you know, the thing <laughs> that switched up everyone's <laughs> plans thing. and put a halt to yeah. touring. You know, yeah. what inspired to get you guys back into the studio so quickly? Uh, we actually had this planned from the beginning. Uh, we were very lucky due to the, the whole um, planning of this because we went... We came home from a big European uh, tour that yeah. was really successful. And that ended in late February, I guess. So we came home just before the pandemic um, took out the whole world. And uh, on that tour, we recorded a live album as well. So everything was already planned to release that. Um, while all the other bands were kind of live streaming, small shows with no audience uh, we could deliver a, a full-on show from hammerfall with with a great audience and and everything so that was really lucky and we had already had planned 
for this that we were going to re release a new album in 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 the beginning of 2022. So um, like we entered the studio almost a year ago, and um, that was part of the plan from the beginning. So we were very lucky. With some of these tracks, were they uh, you know left from the Dominion sessions, or was it a whole new writing process? Uh, I actually think that Oscar uh, had a lot of songs ready um, already when we got home from the tour because he, he wrote a lot of them on the tour and even before that. So I guess he, he actually had some songs ready before the Dominion album was released. So yeah, if, if you look back uh, the way he worked like before, he always took some time off to sit home by his studio and write songs um, before an album. And um, we we kind of planned to have it like that, uh, so he could have the time off and uh, and just focus on writing songs. But uh, nowadays he he actually takes his uh, recording set things set, set up with him all the time. So whenever he's on vacation or even when we are out on tour. He can get off, get off stage, um, and we are all like sweaty and have a drink, and we are, <laughs> we are really pumped with adrenaline. And he gets off stage and take a sip uh, of a beer and uh, set up his recording stuff and picks up the guitar after a show, because he knows he has a lot of energy and a lot of uh, positive, positive vibes to to write some new riffs. That's that's awesome, I think. So. That's why he had so much songs ready. In, in perfect in, time to do uh, it, man. You get off stage, you're full of like all that energy, and and, uh, <laughs> and it's yeah. you're like, oh, all these ideas are just you know. <laughs> hey, that's a good way of doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that, uh, that actually shows up on, on the record as well because there's a lot of good energy in, in that. Because of course you need to focus and and try to capture that on a record, but. Uh, uh, it's equally important to to have it in the riff from the beginning. That's right. That's right. And it was produced by uh, Frederick Nordstrom as well, right? Yeah, he's been doing uh, the last couple of albums, uh, and he did an amazing job on this one. I think uh, he really uh, stepped up and um, and made his magic to the to the product. And uh, I think it's crystal clear. Lots of energy, and and you can hear everything and yeah i really like the production on this one he's a master eh? he's so good at what he does absolutely <laughs> but I, yeah i'm sure absolutely. it'd be really hard to nail down too because he's always in in demand <laughs> <laughs> yeah what a legend but uh you know the opening track is uh incredible i mean i think it's such a great tribute to not only the fans but also the band's journey over the last almost 30 years was that the idea behind that opener? Uh, well, it, it is about the fans. I mean, without the fans, we wouldn't be nothing. Uh, I guess we would keep on struggling to release records, but mm. we have, I mean, the greatest fans in the world. I, I guess every band says that, but we really like <laughs> our fans. And this is a, like a tribute to them. And, um, and as well as, uh, I mean, we look at the, the band as a family and brothers yes um and we can we even included our own families into this on, on the video we took our sons and daughters with them uh, in in the video but um, this is a tribute to to all the fans and all the brothers and sisters out there brotherhood yes that's it and it's generational now you know when you when you've been around that long i'm sure you're seeing it a lot where you're seeing uh families and and people of all ages coming now it's it's oh yeah than, for sure i mean you know? uh, i remember right when i got to my first concert i was kind of too young to go there by myself so i had to drag my mom to the concert i, I saw except when i was like 10 years old i don't know uh, and that's what we see on tour now uh we see small kids <laughs> sitting on their parents uh, shoulders and uh, and we see old people uh, even older than us <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of diversity in the audience and that that puts a big smile i mean it's so great to see that 
we can appeal to different kind of people all over the world. It's yeah, it's incredible. It really is incredible. And uh, of course, I mean, you've got King Diamond on the track, Venerate Me as well. That's pretty damn badass, man. <laughs> yeah, cool. I mean, we've been a long time fans of King Diamond since we were kids, I guess. And uh, I've listened, I, I can't tell you how many times I've listened to the old records. But uh, <clears throat> to have him on a track like this, it's not like it's featuring King Diamond. He didn't do that much. It was just a small part. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> when, when Oscar wrote a song, he talked to Joachim and, and they came down with the lyrics and the vocal lines. And um, Oscar said, it would be so cool to have King sing like this. You know, uh, this is kind of a King Diamond vibe on this uh, track. So, uh, uh, and we talked about it and Pontus said, well, I, I can call him. I, I know King, you know, because he's a sound guy. He's a front of house yeah, guy yeah, for yeah. King Diamond. So, so we had the connections and he just called him and asked if, this would be something that we he would consider because he I mean I haven't seen King do that kind of stuff so um, just having on that small part was a big thing for us um, it wasn't to promote our album ah oh, we have King Diamond on the record it was for us to have something that we really really appreciate absolutely and the fans appreciate it too it's so cool that's definitely yeah. a big highlight it's it's awesome who would want <laughs> King on you on your record man. <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely but uh, yeah. uh another thing is uh, of course uh hector is, is such a cool looking character man it's you know you he, he's got his own comics action figures i mean the character is just perfect for that do you remember the origins of hector for the band and when he was created back in the day i i was on the first record so i i remember they we're talking about having something like a, a mascot, you know, kind of like Eddie yeah, yeah. Or, or, or something. They, they wanted to have a warrior um, and, and they drew up the, the basic lines of Hector. But then I think it was Andreas Marshall who, um, who made the first original design of, of uh, Glory to the Brave album. And, and he kind of designed Hector uh, as the warrior he, he is today. So he has many... He has come in in many different shapes during the years, but um, uh, he's still the the warrior that comes with us on every album. And and you know you probably see a lot of fans with uh, Hector tattoos and and cosplaying. I saw someone was cosplaying. Yeah, uh, that's great to see. We've seen so many great costumes over the years. Uh, people come up with us to us and and show us pictures or or even comes like Hector sometimes and, and bring their big badass hammers and, and stuff. So <laughs> it's really, really cool to see. And a lot of great tattoos for sure. You know, film or animation or something like that. Do you think there's a possibility that, you know, that's something you want to head down that road with, with the character? Sure. I mean, why not? Uh, just, just by releasing a comic about Hector is, um, uh, is making him come alive in a different way because uh, right now he's on on the covers uh, mm. and and a lot of different i mean he he uh, he looks different from album to album but uh, to make him come alive with the story around it uh, that would be great i mean look looking at uh, um, you can have him as uh, as a video game maybe or something oh. it would be really really cool yeah, possible. Imagine yeah, being Hector with a big at badass hammer and and the shields to swing around. <laughs> that would be that cool. would be yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, of course, I mean, another big thing is you're hitting the road with Halloween real soon as well. Uh, you've probably done plenty of shows with those boys in, in the past. Uh, is that right? You two of those uh, guys? I haven't played with them. I was, I mean, I was in the band in '97, but then I took ten years off came yep. back in 2007 so i haven't played with halloween at all uh, huh? and i mean they are kind of my one of my childhood favorites so uh, uh this will be so great to meet them and and hang out and play shows with them see to see them on stage every night it would be so cool you saying that you're a big fan of that band are you yes nervous at all you know because i mean you're you're on a very top level you're in a you know top level band but here's these guys that you grew up listening to i mean there's got to be something inside you that's like 
are going to fanboy a well, little bit, do you reckon? Yeah, I, I see what you mean. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not nervous per se, but it will. I'm hoping that my childhood heroes uh, don't disappoint me. You know what I mean? If you nah. if you talk to someone and, and they're kind of assholes, that would be that wouldn't be worth it. Then I would uh, rather have my childhood image. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, 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 I've met the guys in, in uh, Halloween, so I know they're not assholes. So it's going to be so great to hang out and, and get to know them uh, a bit more. Absolutely. No, they're good guys. They are really, really good guys. Yes. I've had them on the show and uh, lots of time for those boys. So, I, I mean, here's the million dollar question. And this is me just dreaming, but I know a lot of people would love to see it. Halloween, Hammerfall, Australian tour. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> mind at all. <laughs> that would be really, really great for sure. I would love well, it. I'm, I'll be there. Hey, in the well, let's make it happen. Well, I, I well, someone's gonna make it happen. Someone's gonna listen to this. <laughs> Someone has to make it happen, and I'll just I'll buy a ticket. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, of course, I mean, what else is on the cards for the rest of the year? I know it's a bit hard to tell, but you got this tour, albums just dropped. Yeah, unfortunately, our um, tour with Halloween was a bit split up uh, and delayed. It didn't go as planned, um, mm. but um, we, we split it up uh, during the whole year. And um, it's going to be a hectic fall, I guess. Uh, we have South American dates and... Uh, a couple of festivals we are talking about. Um, it's it's not that much that is um, set already, but um, there there are big plans for sure, and um, even North America. We will see about it. Uh, we try to squeeze in as much as we can. Um, I mean, it's, we we we've been sitting on our asses for two years now and we want to get out on the road, but we can't be everywhere all the time <laughs> we <have> to, try <laughs> yeah. to, to do it right. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, when the time comes, I don't know if you, you can still see me, but I'm holding a beer here and I'm going to keep this yes, cold I for see. you. I'm oh. going to keep these cold for you until you boys get down here and we're going to have a big massive party uh, because, you know, everyone needs a bit of have a fall lovely. in Australia, mate. <laughs> yeah well so frederick it's been, it would be great it's been awesome hanging out with you on the show uh of course the new hammer fall album hammer of dawn is out now we'll have all the links down in the show notes until there mate take care and uh take you know, care go forth stay safe and and hopefully we'll get there real soon <laughs>